the heart and soul behind every business. Stories. Welcome to Business Story of the Week, hosted by me, Joshua Lori. From setbacks to comebacks, from tragedies to triumphs, we inspire entrepreneurs through conversations that matter. Witness the magic that turns dreams into reality. Whether it's your career, business, or life, your success is always one story away. This is Business Story of the Week. This is Phoebe, and this is Business Story of the Week. Wow. Fantastic. And that is Phoebe, our guest for today. And I'm your host, Joshua. Like every day, like every episode, today's question is, is success more about strategy or mindset? Well, Phoebe is the woman of the hour. She is going to be our guest for today. She is a perfect guest to answer that question. Phoebe is a business mindset coach that helps entrepreneurs grow their company to the next level by eliminating mental blocks, holding them back. After spending a decade working her way up through nearly every role in business to operating seven-figure companies, she found that business tactics are only a tiny factor of success, while the main factor that is often overlooked, is tied to mindset. Very interesting stuff. Her method blends business growth strategies, mindset work, and self-mastery practices that lead not just to growth in business, but in all areas of life. I'm very excited for this topic, ladies and gentlemen. I think it's perfect for the show. It's a perfect topic for the show. Phoebe, thank you for coming on. You're looking lovely today. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks so much for having me. I love talking about this. Oh, I, I could tell already. I could tell that you're going to be excited about this topic. And I, I feel even more excited because it's exactly the type of topic that we love talking about on here as well. Their audience listeners love listening to. But Phoebe, before we get into it, I always start off the, the show this way. What did the young Phoebe peer point? Think about success and freedom. Did the young Phoebe always know that she was going to get into business? That she was going to be a business mindset coach for that matter? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I was very much a traditional girly. You know, get good grades, do all the right things, wow. don't get in trouble, follow the path, and you'll just be successful magically. That's really mm -hmm. what I believe. Right now I'm, I'm 35. So that was kind of the path that was offered back then. Right. I didn't know anything about the world of entrepreneurship. I barely knew anything about owning your own business and owning your own business back then was associated with like being a plumber or a mechanic. Right. It's not right. exactly something that I associated with women at all. But what I did know is that I wanted to be successful and I wanted to make a lot mm. of money and I wanted to be impressive. Um, mm. And I first really looked at sales as the opportunity to do that because I knew that earning potential was unlimited and I was going to be great at earning commissions. And so that was kind of the path that I pursued initially. I also took my education very seriously and mm -hmm. I got a full ride to college and got straight A's. You know, I did all the right things you're supposed to do to be successful, but I really had no idea what that would look like. Wow. And of course, success is, you know, different. It's relative to different people, right? Of course, probably growing up, we always saw success as something like, you know, having lots of money, everything that is like your car, everything that you want in life, possibly. But of course, now growing up and then, and then of course, seeing that different experiences that you've had throughout your career, success clearly was redefined. Mm -hmm. Phoebe, I wanted to ask a little bit about that actually, because you had quite a, a career as well. You you know, you worked your role in every business, like the introduction said. You also operated seven figure companies. So mm -hmm. it's not like it's not like you you weren't a stranger to success. You you clearly have been around successful companies, successful people. How would you define success now, especially having gone through all of that and and do you think success was easier as you grew older or as, as you 
progressed with your career? Do you think it came easier now than it did before? So I define success first and foremost as being physically and mentally healthy. Mm. I, for my entire 20s, I was chronically in pain and chronically oh. ill. And so I actually lost my first career to my illness and basically couldn't work and oh, wow. lost all my money paying to get my health back. So I, at a pretty young age, realized that the most important thing that I can have is my health, uh, physical health. And then when I recovered from that journey and I was healthy again, I was plagued with the mental challenges that come with having a decade of health challenges and being defined by that and yeah. feeling like you're behind and you have more to overcome now and, mm -hmm. you know, all of the mental challenges that come with that. And so then I realized I had to get myself mentally healthy. And by that point, I realized that success is possible only if you have a foundation of good health. And then from there, really the rest of it becomes so much easier. Mm -hmm. And when if you find that you're fighting those sorts of journeys, it's often tied to something that is related to either physical or mental health. That is fascinating. And of course, it, it, it's such a relatable story. Is it not like we're always chronically working or always chronically, like especially if you're in business, right? You're, you always think you have to put in your everything, like like the, the the famous saying is like you traded an eight hour job to a twenty four seven job, especially if you're an entrepreneur. And we feel like we have to put in twice the amount of work into a business because, of course, I mean it's natural as an entrepreneur we love it, but it's our baby, right, so to speak. But we're sacrificing so much of ourselves, we're uh, we're actually losing a lot more. In the long run, especially like you just said, you, you spent actually spent a lot more. You spent so much of your career earnings just getting your health back, and now you was you found that it was even harder to break through the mental block. Phoebe, could you talk to us a little bit about first the physical health? Just you know, just a little summary and walk us through that. What was the physical health that you had to overcome, and how did that compare to breaking through your mental blocks? So when I was 17, I started developing uh, numbness in my legs and they didn't really know it was up. So I just kind of pushed through it. I was um, a an athlete and I ended up getting an NCAA Division II track uh -huh. and cross country scholarship. So that's wow. how I got into college. And so the workload increased tremendously. Mm -hmm. You know, you're training so hard um, at that level. And so my pain got so much worse. Come to find out I had a slipped disc. So I had... Um, a lot of medication that I was on, a lot of physical therapy, a lot of injections, mm. nothing worked, ended up having back surgery and that made it worse. Yeah. So a year oh. later I had another back surgery. Then I got a staph infection in my spinal cord. So, oh, no. um, I had a 50% chance of living. They're like, we'll take you off the meds. And if you live, then well, you live. And if you don't, I'm sorry, make your, you know, okay. arrangements. So I was on a, a pick line, which just directly injects antibiotics into your bloodstream for eight weeks. And when I came off of that, I had beat the infection, but I was like 85 pounds and, you know, just bed sores all over me. And it was, it was a rough journey back to, you know, what would be considered good health. So at that time I was about they told me I was about 22. I think they told me to go on disability the rest of my life. They're like, you're just going to be in pain. There's nothing we can do for you. You've had three surgeries. There's nothing we can do. And I just radically rejected that idea, obviously. Wow. So I just continued to medicate myself. I was on 14 different medications um, to keep me out of pain as much as possible and plugging along. And then about two years after that, my body broke down. It was like, oh. no more. We can't keep doing these meds. Um, and so that's when I ended up losing my career because I couldn't keep up on the work. I was breaking out in rashes all over my body. All of my joints were swelling. My mm. immune system was just obliterated. And so my body wow. completely turned on itself. So that mm. was the point that I really had to face this head on and look for the root symptoms of what is going on instead of band-aiding it. Mm -hmm. And this, you know, prepared me for business, right? We often as CEOs want to just band-aid things by like yeah. throwing money at it doing more ads, yes. hiring another team member. Yes. And at the end of the day, it's always going to come back to bite you. 
-hmm. So I checked myself into a holistic health clinic and 18 months, I was in remission of all of the autoimmune diseases that I had had, yeah, I as well as I had reversed my back pain, all of the symptoms that I had. Wow. So I had a new lease on life for the first time, um, yeah. but I, I was still had, you know, a lot of healing journey ahead just to mm -hmm. repair everything. Um, and so it was at this point that I had a clean slate. I had no job. Um, you know, I had been doing random things, you know, kind of over the last two years mm -hmm. and I couldn't go back to the career that I had because it was so high stress. It had been part of what contributed to my health issues. Yes. So yes. at this point it was really being able to mentally accept that this is where I'm at and it's mm -hmm. okay. And I'm going to make the most of it. And so the only thing I knew to do was just get online find five entrepreneurs that I thought were doing well. And I just reached out to them and asked if they would give me an interview. I didn't really have much to offer except for mm -hmm. a good energy and, you know, some random skills. And one of them ended up giving me a job and that wow. was in business. And I kind of grew from there. Wow. It's, it's, first of all, what a story, what a remarkable comeback, Phoebe. Of course you, you, you defy the odds clearly. And mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think I've ever heard of staph infection on the spine. That is mind blowing to me. I mean, I, I, I practice martial arts, you know, I know the staph infections in like your arms and your feet and it hurts. It's bad. Yeah. I can't even, even imagine on your spine. Oh, <laughs> but Phoebe, you mentioned that overcoming these health uh, limitations was also a part of your journey as much as it was overcoming your mental blocks and uh, overcoming the mindset of, of, you know, because I mean, clearly one thing was health, but another thing was also, you know, how do you even begin to overcome that? And like you said, you defined it as a decade, your health defined that decade of your life. And it must have been almost, it must have felt impossible at times. It must have felt hopeless many times, especially people telling you otherwise. And Phoebe, now you are teaching clients, you're teaching organizations, you're teaching people the same mindset to break through whatever it is that is holding them back. Phoebe, if, if business was a blueprint, what would be the cornerstone? What would be the foundation to build up on that? And why is it mindset and how do you teach that now today to the ones that you know who, who people are you teaching to the clients organizations how do you even start so the cornerstone of business is definitely tied to mindset because mm -hmm. for example i was talking with a client the other day and he said oh i've tried that and it didn't work and what i said was mm, correction you tried mm -hmm. that and it hasn't worked yet there's a oh, very big oh, difference. Okay, okay. You know what I mean? Interesting. And so, and so if there is a there's always different perspectives on everything. Right. And so wow. deciding what perspective you're going to take when you enter into something or you take on a project or you set a goal mm -hmm. is the difference between whether it goes is successful or not. And if you start out with the perspective that is working against you, whether you realize it or not, then it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Now, mm. it's not that anyone plans to fail, right? But we do make choices that are subconsciously uh, affecting the results that we get, even as something as simple as, oh, I tried that and it didn't work. We're limiting possibility because of the mm. way that we're relating to failure or relating to, you know, black and white thinking. I see. I see. It's almost like your relationship with failure and success as well, right? We, we think that we define failure as something that, of course, we always want to avoid failure, right? But at the same time, I feel like our relationship with success is like the way we see success is almost like we don't want to be, well, it's, it's natural. We don't want to be uncomfortable, right? When it comes to success, we, we always want to, to, Take the easiest path possible because who wouldn't want to, right? But I think that's where the mindset comes in. Where like, hey, it's it's you have to get through this. You have to break through this kind of uncomfortableness. But at the same time, it's like you said, it maybe hasn't worked yet. 
you're saying mm -hmm. it's not working maybe it hasn't worked yet mm -hmm. Phoebe of course one of your website is your architect your life architect your life architect yes your life architect.com in, in architecturing your successful life foundation framework finishing touch if mindset is the foundation how else do we approach the rest of success so to speak how else do we approach the rest of of business if now that we're putting in mindset as a foundation how can we create a more successful life and why is mindset so crucial to that but also at the same time phoebe talk to us how we even begin to start <laughs> laying so, down the foundations of mindset so what i typically do when i start with people is we separate out what is strategy versus what is mindset so mm -hmm. Usually business owners are only looking at strategy. If I just could get more leads or if I could just yep. have the right marketing strategy or whatever. Always. Um, yes. And so often, yes, there is the strategic portion, but then there is also the beliefs, how you're operating, how you're seeing things, how you're going about things. Often I work with seven figure entrepreneurs that still have a six figure mindset. Mm -hmm. So we have to separate out what is actually strategy versus what is a mindset issue. And mm -hmm. the strategy stuff is easy to fix. That's the easy part. And we, we right. start out by working through getting the strategic stuff right, making sure the team okay. is operating well, and making sure that you are operating well, you have a clear, like prior, your priorities are clear. Usually most entrepreneurs are trying to do too many things at once. And mm -hmm. then we move over to looking at what is the mindset issues that are in the way? How do you identify? How do you think? How are you showing up in life and in business? Because mm -hmm. they are so intertwined as an entrepreneur that we have to look at both of them. Are you wow. sacrificing your relationships, your health, your self-care in order to feed the business because you're in scarcity and you're terrified that if you take your foot off the pedal, that everything will crumble, um, you know, assessing wow. those sorts of things. It's almost like a yeah, mindset foundation. The framework is now, uh, if you like strategy and assessing all of that uh, there. So you could, you could put the finishing touches and architecture in your life, so to speak. But uh, the, the, I love how you put that together because that was literally the question at the first place, you know, is success more about strategy or mindset, but clearly it all begins with mindset. And I love that you, you put it, in such a clear way, in a, such a simple way for us to allow us to kind of tackle this in a way that, you know, most business owners and entrepreneurs struggle with. So, mm -hmm. of course, Phoebe, your website is uncagemecom. Again, it talks a lot of, I mean, right there, right below there, the name is like a breakthrough, like right? breaking through your limitations. Mm -hmm. And often these are self-limiting beliefs that we have in a mindset is something that we need to break through these mm -hmm. beliefs. Phoebe, uncageme.com is a website. Of course, the other website as well is our, yourlifearchitect.com. Phoebe, where mm -hmm. else can we find you? Where else can we connect with you? We'd love to get to know you more. Yes. If something resonated with you today, you can absolutely reach out to me on Instagram, shoot me a message. It's the same as my business name. It's uncage underscore me. Wow, fantastic. To all our audience and listeners out there, go check out Phoebe. Phoebe, go follow her on Instagram. Go check out, again, website, uncageme.com. I love that website name again, and I had to say it one more time. And, of course, yourlifearchitect.com. Phoebe, one last bit of wisdom you'd love to leave behind the audience. Take us home. What would it be? Hmm. That is a good question. One piece of wisdom is hard. Mm -hmm. I guess alive. if you find yourself spinning in the same place over and over, it may not be that that's the issue. Look a little bit deeper, ask more questions, dig beneath the surface a little bit, because usually the thing that we think is the problem is not really the problem. The question mm -hmm. is not really the question. So dig a little bit deeper. You might find what you're actually looking for. Wow. I love that. Phoebe, thank you so much for that. I love that. What a way to close and end our show today, our episode. Phoebe, thank you for being on the show. Thank you so much for joining us and offering your insights and your perspective. I hope our audience and listeners loved it as much as I did. Thank you. To all our audience and listeners out there, I hope you got value out of this. Of course, again, go check out Phoebe, go connect with her. And I hope you guys enjoyed this one. 
we will see you on the next one. Bye-bye. All right, so here's the thing. We try to get a little bit better every day, but we can't do it without you. So if you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe below. And if you have any comments, just leave them in the space under.